You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. The options market can be a confusing place. Sorting through the daily avalanche of data, alerts, updates, articles, and analysis to find the most important information is an overwhelming prospect. But now you have help. Welcome to the Options News Rundown, the only program that breaks through the noise to bring you the most important news and information from the world of options. Every day we bring you the top five option stories curated by the options experts at theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for free options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in option trader education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's live Advantage Group Coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. And now it's time to break through the noise. It's time for your Options News Rundown. Hello traders, this is your Options News Rundown for Thursday, May 17th. First up today is a story from Reuters. New applications for U.S. jobless benefits increased more than expected last week, but the number of Americans on unemployment rolls fell to its lowest level since 1973, pointing to a diminishing labor market er, to diminishing labor market slack. Other data on Thursday showed an acceleration in the Mid-Atlantic factory activity this month, with manufacturers saying they were boosting employment and asking higher prices for their products. The combination of a tightening labor market and firming inflation bolsters expectations that the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates next month. Initial claims for state unemployment benefits rose 11,000 to a seasonally adjusted 222,000 for the end of the week, May 12th, the Labor Department said. Economists polled by Reuters had forecast claims rising to 215,000 in the latest week. The labor market is viewed as being close to or at full employment, with the jobless rate near a 17-and-a-half-year low of 3.9% and within striking distance of the Fed's forecast of 3.8% by the end of this year. The U.S. Central Bank raised rates in March and forecast at least two more hikes for this year. Next up is a story from Bloomberg. If Federal Reserve officials were trying to signal that they want to keep the Treasury yield from yield curve from inverting, it doesn't look like bond traders got the message. Sure, the curve steepened this week by, by just about every measure, but it wasn't a pullback from rate hike wagers, which have driven the flattening trends that's dominated the markets for months. Instead, this week's move resulted from a surge in 10- and 30-year yields through key support levels that had held for years in a bare steepening move that came amid rising oil prices and firming inflation expectations. If anything, traders are pricing in a more aggressive Fed. The spread between Eurodollar future contracts that expire in December 18th and those maturing 20 month, or, sorry, 12 months later, which reflects tightening expectations for next year, broke through a range dating back to 2015. The market is now bracing for almost two quarter point increases in 2019 after barely pricing in one a month ago. That's on top of 2.5 moves now expected by the end of this year. Those wagers don't seem to fly in the face of central bankers' comments this week, signaling concerns about the yield curve heading towards inversion. Atlanta Fed President Raphael Bostic called it, quote, my job to make sure that doesn't happen. St. Louis Fed President James Bullard said it'd be a very negative signal if aggressive tightening pushed spreads to below zero. Incoming New York Fed President John Williams was more measured, saying we need to keep our eye on what happens to the yield curve in the next year or two as we continue to raise rates. Our final story today is from CNBC. Asian stocks closed narrowly mixed on Thursday as the yield on the 10-year Treasury stayed above 3%. 
Investors also kept an eye on the second round of U.S.-China trade talks. The most the mostly sideways trade in Asia came after U.S. stocks closed higher on Wednesday, with retail sector stocks climbing following strong results from the department store company Macy's. Of note, the small cap Russell 2000 added 1% and, figure, er, and finished at a record close. The yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury ro note rose to a fresh near 7-year high on Wednesday, surpassing the 3.1% level for the first time since July 8th, 2011. The 10-year U.S. Treasury yield rose to 3.12% on Thursday. Trade was also back in the picture as the second round of U.S.-China trade talks kicked off, this time taking place in Washington. Trade-related frictions have spooked the markets earlier this year, with growth with investors at the time concerned over the impact on, of tariffs on growth. Meanwhile, President Trump said on Wednesday that whether his planned meeting with North Korea Kim Jong-un goes through remains to be seen. Earlier, North Korea said that it would rethink the June 12th summit if the U.S. insisted on denuclearization. The uncertainty did not appear to have a major impact on markets in the region. And that's all we have for today. You can find all of these stories and more on theoptionsinsider.com. I'll be back tomorrow with more options and news you can use. Thank you for listening to the Options News Rundown. To learn more about these stories or any other developments from the world of options, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for free options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in option trader education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's live Advantage Group Coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options. Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.